Hi! Today's video is about something that most people have never seen, and this is a Newtone IM3103 Master Station. And the IM3103 was called the Communa Center, and it was a Communa Center because it was more than just an AM FM radio with room to room intercom, it had some advanced features that enabled you to make it the hub of the home for communication and note taking and so forth. The Communa Center idea was a long lived idea for Newtone. The very first model that came out that started the idea was way back in the mid or mid or late 60s and that was the model 2542. And the 2542 was based on the model 2540. Newtone always had a long history of creating variations on a basic design and adding enhancements to it to make a new design or a new model. And the 2542, which is an ultra, ultra rare model because it was very, very expensive, it had the AM, FM radio and room to room intercom like a 2540, but it also had a clock it had a timer built into the clock that could be used like an alarm clock and it had a cassette player. After the 2542 placement model was the Newtone IM313 and the IM313 came out in 1974. It went through a lot of variations. You have the IM313 and the IMA, IMB, IMC and finally the IMD. The IMD, the last year it was available was 1984 and then all new for 1985 came the IM3103. The 313 series was based on an IM303, which was AM FM radio with room to room intercom. And then the 313s had a clock, it had a cassette player, and then in later versions, it included a weather radio and that would turn on automatically if there was going to be a hurricane or something in your area or a tornado is probably more likely. It would, these were all models that were deemed communa centers. That's where the name came from. 3103 was the all new communa center for 1985. And no, it was not the last model they ever made that would be a communa center, although I don't think the name was used after the 3103. There were actually two other models that came after this, which someday I'll do a video about because I actually have both of them. And one of them is ultra rare that most people don't even know ever existed. 3103 is based on the venerable IM3003. And this is an IM3003M. This is M is for modern. Modern means it has the black front with the chrome insert as opposed to the traditional which has the wood grain like the 3103 or later the white version. The IM3003 came out in 1984 and was all new and it really is the model that launched the new era of modern intercom master stations. The 3103 came out all new in 19. Unlike what a lot of people may have assumed, especially later in the production of the 3103, this was not Newtone's attempt to bolster sales of the 3003 or something like that. It's a pretty safe guess that the 3003 and the 3103, they were developed and designed in the same time frame although this is a more complex unit, so it probably took longer, which is why it came out in 1985. And if we look at this catalog from, this is a 1985 catalog, and here it is, it's not the first model in the set. The first model is still the 3003. And then we have the new IM3103 Communa Center, and it touts all of the features that it has and it has a fairly extensive place in the catalog. It consists of, let's see, it's almost eight pages, which is a lot in a single catalog for a single model. The thing that makes this a Communa Center is it has a built-in 
answering machine and cassette player. This unit came from a local customer and it's here. It's actually, I've already rebuilt it and it's going back to her house tomorrow, which is why I have to do the video today because we don't see a lot of 3103s. In a completed installation, there is a telephone handset that hangs here. I didn't bring the handset with me because I didn't have any reason to. I left it at her house, but there would be a handset that hung here. It allows you, there it's phone wiring that's tied into this, of course, because it has the answering machine and then you have the telephone. And that's what sort of makes it a communication center or a communa center, is it's all in one location. The disadvantage to the 3103, well, there were several. The first problem with it was, and this is from when it was brand new, as far as I remember, and later on when I actually she sold these was its size. It's a really, really big unit. And the way that I always refer to it is, it's really big and it's really brown. It's, as you can see, it's more than twice the size of a 3303. It's like twice the height and it's like 25% wider because of the telephone handset cradle. So it's a really big unit. It takes up a lot of wall space and it was never available in any other color choices other than what you see here, the traditional, which is the faux wood grain. It does have these sort of um, silvery kind of panels and then the rest of it's black with the wood grain on the edges. It's a really, really big unit. And when you hang the handset on here, it just, it's just really, really big. That was always a problem. And then the other problem with it was when this was brand new and it came out in 1985, the list price on this was $799.90. And that's a whole lot of money in 1985 for just the master station. That's not the wall housing. It's not the chai module. It's not your wiring and remote stations. It's just the master station. So it was more than twice the cost of a 3003. And I think for a lot of people, it's like, uh, I don't know, Margaret, I don't think we really need to spend that much. Let's buy the little one instead. So if we look at some of the features of the 3103 from the catalog, it shows us, it tells, what it actually says is the radio intercom system for today's family on the go. That sounds familiar, like today, except nowadays we have iPhones and things like that. You'll get all your messages anytime, anywhere with Newtone's new IM3103, perfect for a home or office, combines dual cassette telephone answering system, includes remote command and telephone handset with a 13 station centralized radio intercom system. Simple to operate, eh, not so much. The intercom is simple to operate, and I think most people know how to dial a touchtone phone, but when it comes to the answering machine, not so simple. Uh, it's a dual cassette system, it lets you answer the phone even when you're away, records important incoming messages, very, very outgoing message, greet callers with a short 10 second or a longer 60 second message, yada, 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 variable length incoming messages. You could set the time that you could that the caller had to leave a message, auto shut off, so it always resets after it answers a call. It had an announce only feature, so it wouldn't you couldn't leave a message. It just ha would have a recorded announcement, play back your calls, ring adjust the number of times it would ring before it answered. It allowed you to screen calls. You could record, if you were talking on the telephone, you could record both sides of the conversation. That's kind of illegal, I think, at least in today's world, unless you tell the caller. Uh, automatic volume control, built-in microphone, uh, LEDs, rewind, tape counter. It's got everything. It's all in the pot. Uh, everything they could think of, they figured into it. One of the other nice features about it was the the incoming message tape, which is the top one, was also designed to work as a standard cassette player so you could play pre-recorded store-bought cassette music throughout the house. So that was actually a, a good feature. They didn't give that up. But you can see this is quite extensive here and it was not too complicated to operate if you would read the manual and follow through with what you needed to do. Inside here on the door are sort of the short list of instructions on how to do your most basic of functions. One of the problems with this model 
that occurred early on was we found that the answering machine and the telephone, maybe not the handset so much, the handset was a problem because the handsets were very um, cheesy. First one was a model TEL 101 and then later it became a TEL 102. And if you think back to the late 80s and early 90s, where you would go down to your local variety store or drug store and you would buy a little inexpensive um, corded handset touch tone phone which you would pay about maybe six or seven dollars for that's pretty much what hung here they weren't very good quality uh, lots of times if they got dropped on the floor they would break and it was just a poorly designed phone so that was one problem but the answering machine portion had its own set of problems. For those of us who had done, have been doing Newtone for a long time, when the 3103 came out with the answering machine feature, there could possibly have been a collective groan with all of the dealers that had been around a while because we all remembered the problems and debacle that we had when Newtone introduced the IM806. The IM806, while it doesn't have an answering machine, it does have a telephone interface and it was one of the downfalls of the system. It was a very short-lived model. Telephone portion of the system created a lot of problems because if it wasn't operated correctly or if it malfunctioned, it could tie up people's phone lines where you couldn't get a dial tone and nobody's gonna put up with that for very long. So it was not a successful model. And then they come out with another model that has a telephone as part of the system or is tied into the telephone system. And it's like, no, not again. And we all hoped that it would be better. One of the problems with these is or was at that time, and maybe it's still true today, I, probably not, but maybe, is telephone systems throughout the country are not very uniform. Some areas, I think like back east and in the south, the telephone systems were a lot older and more antiquated. And then in newer areas, they had more modern telephone systems. And this isn't the equipment people had in their house. This is at like the central telephone offices. And I know that when I started my business, when I started Northside Service Company back in 1986, we were in an area that had a, an old telephone central station and there was no caller ID, there was no call forwarding, there was none of those, those features. They existed in other places, but they didn't exist where I was because the equipment was so old, they just didn't offer those features. So telephone systems were not really uniform. And then when you have a design like this, it wasn't always compatible. It didn't work very well. And if there was a failure in the master station that had to do with the answering machine sometimes, it was like the 806. It would lock up people's phone lines and they couldn't get a dial tone and it was just a problem. And then the other thing that started to occur around 1985 or so was inexpensive consumer answering machines and cordless phones started to become really, really popular and really, really available and not super expensive. So a lot of people had them. And the original consumer answering machines, the kinds kind of like this that had cassette tapes or they had the little micro cassettes if it was really swift and swanky, not always compatible with something like this. The same thing with cordless phones. There was, it was sort of the wild west days of that kind of equipment and not everything was compatible with everything else and you would get conflicts and problems and it just came out at the wrong time. So if you factor all of those potential problems and then along with the idea that it's really big and really brown, it was always, and the cost, it was always kind of a tough sell because a lot of people I don't think really felt that they needed it. In today's world, you don't see a lot of 3103s come in for repair every now and then. And most of them that we do see, it's like this customer's. She needs the radio, the intercom, and the door chime to work. Her handset still works and she does use it. However, 
She's not at all interested in using the answering machine or the tape player or any of that. It's just not the way their household works. So, you know, they have cell phones and they have other answering machines and things. So, you know, this is just kind of old fashioned in here. In a lot of respects, repairing these is similar to rebuilding an IM3003. And for the radio intercom portion of the set, they have the same sort of problems. Most of the problems they have are age-related problems, failures of components and failures in the boards that lead to humming on the system and low volume and low chime volume and lack of intercom functions and those kind of things. So, and that's all relatively straightforward to repair. When it comes to the answering machine and tape that portion, it's a whole nother ball of wax because it's a very complex design and parts for the cassette and answering machine portion are not available. I don't know anybody who's got a lot of these sitting in the back room waiting to give up their parts for a repair. So, you know, it's kind of tough. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back of it. Oh, so this is the door that opens up. And here are the room control switches, which are just like the room control switches behind the door on a 3003. So it's very similar in its design. But let's go ahead and look at the back and sort of do an overview of how it's put together. So here's the back of the IM3103. And a lot of this is very similar to the back of a 3003. It's sort of like if you took this and stretched it all out, it would be very similar in its design. And that would be expected because they were, I'm pretty sure they were designed side by side and they reused a lot of the physical design between the two models because that was a sensible way to go and it probably saved money and time. However, even though they are very, very similar, I guess they would be considered like cousin models, to a large extent, there isn't anything in here that's really interchangeable with a 3003 and 3003 parts are not interchangeable with a 3103. They are actually different models. Some of the differences are, so down here we have the power supply, audio amplifier, and intercom control board. And while on the surface of it, this looks very much like the one in a 3003, it is actually a completely different board. And part of the power supply in this section here is gone. It's not on the board because it's mounted on a separate board underneath this board here with the red cover on it. And that's because they needed a more complex power supply because it has to power not only the regular radio intercom boards, but it has to power the answering machine board and the audio cassette preamp board here. So it's a little more complicated. Back here, you have the, the switchboard assembly that you saw on the door in the front. Well, this is probably the board that's the closest to the, to the board that's in the 3003, it is different. There are changes between the two boards. There are additional components and additional connections. The AM FM tuner here, while the fundamental tuner board design is identical to a 3003, some of the differences are the interconnect cables, the cables that come off the tuner board and plug into other boards are longer because everything is stretched out and moved further apart. If you needed to replace a tuner, I, you could rob the cabling off of the original damaged 3103 tuner board and swap it out and that wouldn't be too hard to do but it is different as is up here you have the clock and display board and again it's fundamentally the same board however the interconnect cables are much longer because it's got to reach all the way down here and plug into different spots this is the chime module here and in this case it's actually mounted i consider it to be upside down because the components are against the faceplate and the saw and the solder side of the board is out which is kind of unusual but that's the way they chose to do it it is interesting also that the original chime modules the ia27s and ia28s they came out in 1984 with the 3003 but for the all new im3103 in 1985 was the first year that the IA29 musical chime module was available and in 1985 the IA29 cost $49.90. So that was interesting. Also in 1985 they introduced an all new and for the very last time a built-in the wall fold-down turntable and that was a model RC91 and no it didn't come out in 1991. I don't know why it's 
numbered that way. You would think it would be an RC-85, or 85, but it's not. It's an 891. And the fold-down record player was $272, and that included the wall housing, so it was not inexpensive. These two big boards are the ones that are unique to the 3103. This is the board for the answering machine and cassette control functions, and this board is the cassette mechanism control board and audio preamp and amplifier to allow you to play and record cassettes. One of the last features that made the 3103 kind of interesting was this here. This is a, an IA31RB remote command and it says lets you get your messages from any phone no matter where you are in the world. The 3103 comes complete with a compact remote control that sends a special signal through the telephone lines enabling you to get your message from virtually any phone in the world. And what this was, right here, it was a little battery operated tone generator that you would carry around in your pocket. It's about the size of a small remote control. It's about the size of, a, an, of an original iPod. How about that? And what you would do is carry it around in your pocket and then if you were in, say, Istanbul or China or somewhere in outer Mongolia and you wanted to call home and check your messages, you would simply call up your house telephone number. You would hold this against the mouthpiece of the telephone, push the button. It would create the special tones which the master station would recognize and then it would automatically rewind your incoming message tape and it would replay them for you. So wherever you were, you could hear it. So how's that for advanced tech? technology in the days of mobile phones and instant messaging and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. This was a very advanced unit for its day. Unfortunately, it came out, I think, probably at the wrong time. Plus, it was big and it was brown and other technology was advancing very rapidly in the mid 80s. I think it suffered the fate of a lot of things. It became obsolete way too fast. It's not a bad unit for the radio intercom portion and the door chime that works just like a 3003. So if you have a 3103 and it's not working correctly and you don't really care about the cassette or the answering machine portion, it can be repaired. That's the ins and outs of a Newtone IM3103. Uh, when I have time in the coming weeks or months, I'll show you the ultra rare mysterious replacement for the 3103 that came out in the, uh, I think it was the mid 90s, about 10, 10 years after this it came out, which is a model that it's referred to as the intercom that never existed, even though it actually did. But very, very few people, probably less than um, five or 600 people have ever actually seen one. So I actually have one and when I get to it, I'll make a video about it. That's all for today an overview of the IM3103. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. We have a new mascot at the shop. This is Harvey. Harvey's a hedgehog. Harvey came to the shop over the holidays. He's my new unofficial shop assistant and he's also our social media and YouTube expert. Harvey is here to tell you, subscribe now. Our videos are ad free and our YouTube channel is all ad free. And Harvey wants you to subscribe because we're not making the videos to make any money. We're making the videos to try to help people and give them the information about their new tone intercom systems that seems to be disappearing in the world because there's less and less guys around that have been doing this any length of time. And Harvey's a really nice guy, but he gets really cheesed off when you don't subscribe. So he's gonna do a video pretty soon and he's gonna show all of you who are not YouTube aficionados, how you actually subscribe to our channel. Right now, he wants me to tell you that all you have to do is click the little gear up on the top of the, on the YouTube homepage where it says subscribe. And then when we post a new video, you'll get an email letting you know, and you can come see what I have to yammer on about for the next 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 minutes or something like that. Sorry, they're all long. I can't make them short. I can't teach anybody anything in three and a half minutes. It just takes longer than that. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you do find it interesting, but to keep Harvey happy and to keep him in um, hedgehog chow, subscribe because that way I can afford to feed him and he won't get mad. Anyway, that's all for today. See you on the next video.